If you'd like to attend the next Mad Thing in a Masjid event, inshallah ta'ala, live in a masjid, then click on the link below. It will take you to a Telegram group that has the details for all the events that we do, inshallah. And you can then find the details for the next Mad Thing in a Masjid, which will be on a Saturday, inshallah. Wow, my brother's so far away. Come close, man. You don't know the deal. What is this? What is this? We're acting like we don't know each other. Come closer, inshallah ta'ala. I don't mind if you guys get chairs, feel comfortable, you know the job, but you can't be sitting. If you're participating in the lecture, you can't be sitting on the walls. You've got to be close. There should be no gaps between the believers. Fill up the front space. Come on, brothers. I see a big empty space here. What's going on? Don't worry, I'm not going to spit on anyone. Just come. Can't. I guarantee. Sometimes I, I get gas and it might fly, but. MashaAllah, <laughs> Tabarakallah. Now, I'm on ready. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd. Today's topic is about friendship. Good friends and bad friends. Bad friends are the sneaky type. The ones that will smile in your face, but they'll stab you in your back when you're not looking. They'll take your girl. They'll take your girl. Has that happened to you, Eunice? Don't, don't do you don't do girls, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> that's the good answer, that's what I was like, that's what I was, that's what I was fishing for. But on a serious note, these are the kind of people that what? They'll be pre in your they'll be pre in your women. They'll be what pre in your money. If they can get an opportunity to sell you out, they will. If you're being disrespected, they don't really care. If you're being backbited, they'll join in. But in your face, they're the smiliest guys. But then you've got the believers. The believers who are the best of friends, <coughs> who benefit you, not just in terms of this life, but they benefit you in terms of your afterlife as well. And despite the fact that these friends are better to have the practicing ones on their deen, we will still choose the ones that violate us or push us to get violated, end up in situations where we end up in jail, we end up doing time, we end up getting stabbed, whilst they what? They roll around free. It doesn't make sense for you to be friends with such people, but we still make that decision. Perhaps because we don't really know how dangerous having friends like that is. And when I say dangerous, I don't just mean in terms of the feds. I mean in terms of Allah and the Day of Judgment. Allah doesn't want you to have friends with people like that. Inshallah ta'ala, we're going to go into the topic. And hopefully it will become clear to you from today that you need to have good friends. And stay far away from the bad ones. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ar-Raju. Aman, ala dini khalili fal yanzur ahadukum man yukhalid. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a man is going to be upon the same religion as his best friend. So look at your friend, what's he on? Does he pray? Is your best friend a kafir? Because the Prophet said, you're going to be on the same religion as your best friend. Who are your friends? Because that is who you are. You know one of the ways when you want to get married to someone, one of the best, one of the, one of the, what, what does the religion say? Because you can't go dating with this girl. So what's one of the things that you do? You go and look at her friends. Who does she hang around with? Who are the people that she rolls with? She should find out who are his friends. When I say look, I don't mean look like you're praying them. But as in like, who are they? Is she hang around with girls that don't cover up, that party, that do this, that do that? She must do the same. If you hang around with what? Guys on a block that are doing madness or not. Forget, for, you don't even have to be gangbanging. Just you're not praying. You're swearing. You listen to music. You're cursing. That's who you are then. But you say, but I don't do that. I, I hang around with them because we got a close collection from a long time before. But me, I pray. Very soon you will stop praying. Watch. Very soon. Because did the prophet lie? Did the prophet lie when he said a man is in the religion of his best friend? Soon your religion is going to become like his. Don't, you, don't worry. Today, today, you might be praying and you're hanging around with what people that are not. But tomorrow you will be just like them. May Allah protect you and I, Amin. Because you had the arrogance. This, actually, when the Prophet told you to not hang around people like that, you said, no, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Because you thought that you could protect your iman. A lot of people think, don't worry, bro, I can control myself. I'm hanging around with these guys. When they're passing around weed to each other, I'm not going to take it. I know myself. You thought you knew yourself. You thought what? You knew yourself. My sheikh, he told me a story. He said he had a student that started studying Arabic with him. And the Shaykh told him, make dua to Allah to keep you firm on seeking knowledge. 
So the student said to him, he said, Sheikh, don't worry, I know myself, I'm not going to give up. I know myself, I'm not going to give up. The Sheikh said, when I heard this, he said, in my heart, I became so scared for him. And I said to myself, he's going to be punished by Allah for this statement. Because he actually said to himself that I am in control of myself. I can handle myself, don't worry, I can protect myself. When the Prophet every day would say, Ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Every day the Prophet would, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would say, Ya Allah, keep my heart firm in the deen. Ya Allah, the one who turns the heart, keep my heart firm. The companion said, Oh, Mr. of Allah, are you scared for us? That we might slip off the deen? The Prophet said, Yes, because the thing, because the heart are between the fingers of the most merciful one, Ar Rahman. And he will toss and turn your heart how he wills. So you're not in control of your heart. You think, I can hang around with them and I'll be fine. No. So what happened the next day? When it was time for the class, the student didn't show up. The next day he didn't show up. The day after he didn't show up, he fell off. And the Sheikh found him, he caught him, he said to him, remember that day what you said? Allah is teaching you a lesson, you're not in control of yourself. You looked at me, you said, I, I'm good, don't worry. I'm gonna make sure I turn up to the class. I don't have to make dua. And look at the way Allah showed you. So then the Prophet, after he told you a man is in the religion of his best friend, the Prophet said, فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ So then, take a look at who your friends are. So be, look at who your friends are. Look, literally right now, who do you follow on social media? You may not even see them. You might be following some influences and you're not even hanging around with them. But you spend more time with them than you do with your friends. Imagine, real life people, you might not even have bad friends in real life. They might even be brothers you pray. But why are you following people that are bad? Why are you following drillers and musicians and rappers and, you know, models and this, that? Why are you following this? They will influence you more than what? They will influence you more than people in real life. So then be careful who you follow. When you follow someone on Instagram, when you follow someone on social media, know that you're basically saying, I'm giving you access to my heart. So every man you follow, it can't be a joke. Because imagine you're sitting at home, you just came from the message, you prayed, but you see what? People just putting up what? Videos of them at a rave or with some girls or music. And suddenly you see that, it affects you. So the Prophet said, be careful who you take as a friend. Be very conscious. Each friendship, it's not taken just like that. It's not taken just like that. I remember my dad used to tell me something you're right, when I was young. Because I remember I used to know a lot of people. I always knew a lot of people. Alhamdulillah, I was always a social person. So my dad would tell me, who are your friends? I would say, oh, I've got, I got 50 friends, I've got 100 friends. And he would say to me, That's, he, goes, he would tell me, you're, 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 you're foolish. He said, from them, only about two or three are your friends. As in a man can't, as in you can't be out there saying I've got a hundred friends. No. From those, the ones that are actually your friends is about two or three. So then pick who they are. A man should be able to know. Right now, a person doesn't even know who his friends are. If I ask you who your friends, I've got bare friends. No, you don't. You have like two or three. You might not even have one. A friend is someone that is really there for you. Allah says, well, sahib bil jam, the one who stands by your side, he's, he's by your side. Through thick and thin, he's there for you. Not just in terms of your dunya, but in terms of your deen, he'll wake you up for salah. You do something wrong, he'll tell you, Akhi, you're doing something wrong, fix up. So look for these kind of people. فَلْيَنْظُرْ Look, observe. مَنْ يُخَالِلْ Who you take as a friend. Another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَا تُصَحِبْ إِلَّا مُؤْمِنْ لَا تُصَحِبْ إِلَّا مُؤْمِنًا The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do not become friends with anyone unless they are a believer. So are you, can you become friends with a kafir? Okay, no, you can't become friends with a kafir. Haram to become friends with a kafir. You're not allowed to become friends with a kafir. People always ask, but does that mean, uh, you know, how, how, if you can't be friends with them, how do you give da'wah to them? Giving da'wah doesn't mean you're his friend. You can give da'wah to anyone. You can sit with them, speak with them, take them out for food, give them da'wah, but it doesn't mean you could be their friend. Friend is someone I love and I'm there. No, I spend time with him. No, you can't do that because he will affect you. Human beings are affected. Look at the hadith the Prophet said, you're on the religion of your friend. Your religion is like his. His religion is strong. Your religion is strong. His religion is weak. Your religion is weak. So then, definitely I can't be friends with the kafir now. Because I'm going to be on his religion then. I'm going to be on his religion. The Prophet said, Ya ayyuhaladheena amru la tattakhidu bitalatan min dunikum. Don't take anyone as a close, close friend. friend. That's not a Muslim. Don't take anyone that like that unless he's a Muslim. Does that make sense? Do not do that. Okay, difference between a Muslim and a Mu'min. What's the difference between a Muslim and a Mu'min? A Muslim is a guy who's a Muslim. A Mu'min is one step higher than a Muslim. Right? Because remember the, the, when, 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 when um, the Bedouins came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said, Amanna, they said, we're believers. And Allah said, Qul la But you don't say you're believers. Iman is higher than Islam. 
Does that make sense? We're like in Qulu Aslamna, say we're Muslims. Because a Muslim is the first stage to say, I'll jump to being a believer. Yes, you have Iman. Inshallah, you are all believers. But to say, I'm a believer, that's, you can say, I'm a Muslim. Only Allah knows who's a believer. Only Allah knows who's a, who's a believer. The Prophet didn't say, don't become friends with anyone except he's a Muslim. He said, don't become friends with anyone except he's a Mu'min. So can any one of us here say we're, we're believers? No, only Allah knows if I'm a believer. But I'm a Muslim, definitely. Inshallah we believe. Inshallah we are from the believers. But we say, Inshallah we're from the believers. Can I say with certainty I'm a believer though? Only Allah knows if I'm a believer. But I'm a Muslim though. And Inshallah I'm a believer. But when I look at someone, I can say, yo, he's better than me. Yeah, he, he looks like he's, he's a believer. He prays harder than me. He's got more knowledge than me. I see him doing more than me. Okay, that's the kind of guy I want to be friends with. The believers. The ones who are higher than me, better than me. I'm trying to be friends with people like that. La sahib illa mu'minan. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَلَا يَأْكُلْ طَعَامَكَ إِلَّا تَقِي Wallahi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's wordings are so powerful if you ponder. The Prophet said, don't let anyone eat your food except he fears Allah. Why did the Prophet say, don't let anyone eat your food? Why did he say, what, why, what is the reason for this? Because who eats your food? Where's your food firstly? Where's your food? Where is it? It's at home. Where? In your fridge, right? In your cupboard, right? So the Prophet said, don't let anyone eat your food. Unless he fears Allah. Meaning, don't let anyone into your house. Except that he fears Allah. Because your food, your food is in the house. The Prophet didn't say, don't feed anyone except that he fears Allah. No, you can feed whoever. Feed the, feed the kafir even. Feed the beggar on the street. Feed the poor guy on the street. No problem. Feed the people. But your food, in your yard, that you eat from, that your family eats from. Why? Because you're going to bring someone to your house, he doesn't fear Allah, he's going to be watching your sister. He's going to be seeing the problems that happen in your house, he's going to spread them around to the rest of the world. Sometimes, you know, in your house, when you invite people, sometimes, you know, sometimes you bring someone over, and you, you know, your mom and dad might do a madness. Or one of your brothers or sisters might do a madness, and you're like, that was a bit embarrassing. But next thing you know, the man them are talking about it. How do they know? Because he came and he saw and he spread the rumors. How many times have people let people into the house and they molested their children? How many times have people let people into the house and they slept with their sisters and daughters? How many times have people left and let in people into their house and they spread the secrets of the house and spread the things? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. So then, who do you bring to your house? Your closest friends. So the Prophet is teaching you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you eat with people, when you bring them into your house, when you invite them to your, 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 your weddings, your, your walimas, People of piety, people of taqwa, people of fear Allah Azza wa Jal. Does that make sense? People of fear Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal. Brothers, the, the Prophet was commanded to have good friends. Is there anyone who the Prophet can make friends with who's better than him? Can the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam make friends with anyone better than him? No. But even him, on his own, he cannot be. He has to have friends. And they're righteous. Allah said, وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ Muhammad, make yourself patient. مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَ Allah said, Muhammad, make yourself patient with the ones who what? Are remembering Allah day and night. They're making dua to Allah day and night. Be with them. And then the word Allah said is be patient. Why? Because sometimes it's not easy to be hanging around with people that are always in a masjid. Especially when you're with people that what? I saying, bro, we're gonna go party, we're gonna go rave, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, we're gonna crack a joke, we're gonna do this. No. That sounds like that's, that sounds like fun. It's not fun. Ask the Kafir why he wakes up with what? With a headache every morning. And he's been raving all night. Because what? It's not really fun. But you think it's fun in the moment. Coming to the masjid, that sounds a bit boring. You have to be patient coming to the masjid. You have to be patient with the people of taqwa. You have to be patient with the people of piety. وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِي يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَا Pay attention. Sometimes you make friends with Muslims that are practicing, but all day every day they're just playing games. All day every day they're just joking around. They're not doing anything haram. They're not doing anything haram. They're doing things that are halal. But they're what? They're just, they're just having a good time, laughing, joking, eating, drink, you know, drinking, you know, juice, milkshakes. You know, playing games, let's meet up, let's have some fun, some table tennis, maybe play some pool. Is this the kind of people that Allah tends to be friends with? Allah said, الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ They're making dua, رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ 
They're making dua to Allah Azza wa Jal day and night. That's the kind of people you want to be friends with. That's the kind of people you want to be friends with. The ones who are doing the ibadah, the ones who are in the front row of the masjid, the ones who what? They're in the classes, circles of knowledge. Pay attention, Imam Yahya ibn Abi Kathir. He said, when he done the tafsir of this verse, and he was one of the students of Imam Malik, he said, he majalis al-fiqh. He said that this, this gathering that Allah is talking about, telling the Prophet to be patient with, is the circles of fiqh, the circles of knowledge. So really, the Friday class. <laughs> That's the people you want to be friends with, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. But wouldn't that be an honor for you to think, right, I come to the class, the Friday class, we study fiqh, and what? These are the kind of people that Allah was telling the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa what? To be patient with. And of course, the ones that were his time were better than us. But this shows you the virtue and the honor. And that's the kind of people you want to be friends with, man. That's the kind of people you want to be friends with. Sometimes you look for friendship from people, not based on their religion, but based on honor. If I hang around with this guy, I'm going to get some clout. If I hang around with this guy, he's got friends. If I hang around with this guy, he's got money. If I hang around with this guy, he's, he's got some girls. If I hang around with this guy, I'm going to get some reputation. So Allah addresses this in the Quran. Allah says, وَاتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ آلِهَةً لِيَكُونُوا لَهُمْ عِزَّةً Allah says, these kuffar, they took false gods besides Allah. Why? So they can have some honor. We can have honor. These gods are going to give us honor besides Allah. Allah says, كَلَّا سَيَكْفُرُونَ بِعِبَادَتِهِمْ Allah said, they are going to disbelieve in their worship of them. وَيَكُونُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ ضِدَّةً And they're going to become enemies on the Day of Judgment. So you were searching for honor from this person, whether he's a kafir, or whether even he's a Muslim, but he's not practicing Muslim. But you're going to become enemies on the Day of Judgment. You're going to what? You're going to become enemies on the Day of Judgment. And I'm going to mention this towards the end of the verse. Allah said, they're going to become disconnected. They're going to sell each other out. Imagine you're both standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Both of you were doing wrong and haram. He's going to say, Allah, he made me do it. Allah, but he, he had knowledge. Why didn't he advise me and stop me? They're going to become enemies on the Day of Judgment. The guy you're looking for honor from him on a day of judgment, he's going to become your enemy. Allah said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, There are some that become friends with the kuffar instead of the believers, instead of Muslims. Why? They're looking for honor with the kafir. He looks for honor with the kafir. This kafir is going to give me some cow. But this kafir, I'm going to get some name. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَإِنَّ الْعِزَّةَ لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا but honor is with Allah. Honor is with what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Honor is with the Quran. Honor is with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophets, you don't understand the levels to this. Let me give you an example. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, one of the things Allah gave me is that my enemies, they become scared of me before I face them in battle a month's distance away. So imagine the enemies are coming to fight with the Prophet. A month away from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're scared. They're scared before they arrive. Allah prays, Ru'b in their hearts. Allah said, وَأُلْقِي فِي قُلُوبِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الرُّعْ فَضْرِبُوا فَوْقَ الْأَعْنَاقِ وَضْرِبُوا مِنْهُمْ كُلَّ بَنَانِ Allah, he prays what? Fear in the hearts. Shaykh Abdul Karim al Khuvayr, he says something powerful. He said, this is not just for the Prophet, but his ummah as well. Sometimes you meet a, a shaykh, or you meet a person on his deen and you feel nervous around him. He's got this honor. Why do you feel that nervousness? He's not even shouting it, he's not even angry. He might even be smiling, but you feel nervous around him. Because he follows the sunnah. The Prophet was the best on the sunnah, it was his sunnah. So that's why the kuffar were completely scared of him before they came. As for the believers who follow the sunnah, if your following of the sunnah is strong and high, Allah, he honors you by placing fear in the heart of the kafir before he even comes close to you. He'll be in front of you shaking. Why? Because of the sunnah that you follow. So the honor is what? With Allah. Allah says, فَإِنَّ الْعِزَّةَ لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا It's not with a kafir. It's not with his fasiq. It's not with the guys on a block. It's not with the drug dealers. It's not with the hardest guys. It's not with the people that have the most clout or followers on social media or the most beautiful for the girls, the most beautiful girl or the one who's got this or that or the money. No. فَإِنَّ الْعِزَّةَ لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was what coming to Baytul Maqdis. He was coming to Jerusalem because the, the Muslims had conquered it. And we asked Allah Azza wa Jal to give us Jerusalem back and remove the Yahud from our land. Ameen. Look at why. By the way, you're going to see in the story why, 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 why Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the Muslims conquered it as well. You're going to see in the story. 
Anyway, the people, the Jews that were there, or the Christians that were there, they were people that was, they had seen Roman kings, Roman emperors. And the Roman emperors are what? They are what? They let you know we're an emperor. He's got the nice clothes. He comes in, strong army soldiers on top of his horse. So that's what they're used to when it comes to leaders. Umar is coming to Jerusalem because they said we're going to give the keys to Umar himself. So this great leader, Umar, we're going to give it to him himself. So Umar came all the way from al Medina himself to get the keys to enter and open Jerusalem for the Muslims. When he was coming, another companion called Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah, radiyallahu ta'ala, who a great companion, he saw Umar coming and Umar was what? With his slave on their riding beast. And what happened was that Umar would get, one time ride the riding beast, the camel, and the slave would walk next to him. And then another time Umar would get off the riding beast and let his what? His slave go into the animal so he can take a break. And then sometimes they would both come off the riding beast to give the animal a break. And Umar's clothes are dusty, they look unclean, because he's just been riding through the desert. And it's not royalty clothes, normal clothes. So Abu Ubaidah, he sees this, he said, he said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, he said, the way you're dressing, I think you should maybe like, you know, put on some fresh clothes, put on some nice clothes, because these people are not going to respect you. They're not going to respect you. They're used to rulers being mighty and clothes and this and that and soldiers and army. So if you want them to respect you, you, know, you, you got to look a bit different. So Umar became angry. He said, had it been anyone other than you who said this to me, he said, I would have punished you. Allah honored us through Islam. We were nothing before. We were barefooted Arab Bedouins used to fight each other over camels. You know, they had a war for nine years over a camel once. Does that even sound sm That's the kind of people that they were. One camel, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure of the name. But there was a, there was a war they had over one camel. And guess what? Now they became the conquerors of Persia and Roman cities and this and that. He said, where did we get this from? We got it from Islam, not from how we dress. So the point is, honor is with Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Honor is with Allah. Allah said in another verse, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, O you who believe, do not take the kuffar as friends. Do not take the kuffar as friends. Do you want Allah to have a big evidence against you on the day of judgment? Why have you taken this kafir as a friend? So that is a proof for Allah to punish you on the day of judgment now. Does that make sense? And how can you take these people as friends when they disbelieve in Allah? Allah said, لا تجد قوما. Allah said, you do not find. It doesn't exist. يؤمنون. You don't find a group of people who are believers in what? Billahi wal yawmil akhir. You do not find, it doesn't exist that there's a group of people that believe in Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa Allah in the last day. Yuwadduna man haddallahu wa rasoolah. They, and then they have friends that are kuffar. It doesn't exist. Allah said, it doesn't exist that this man, he believes in Allah and the judgment and he's friends with a kafir. Why? Because you cannot love someone that is an enemy to your friend. Can you love someone that smacks your mom in the face? Every day come smack your mom in the face. Can you love that person? But if you hang around with that person, you're a snake. You're, you don't really love your mom. These people do worse. They do shirk. They worship another god besides Allah. And it's, some of them say, Allah don't exist. Some of them say, Allah didn't create me. Some monkey created I come from monkey. They say, call me monkey, man. If I look him in the face, I say, hey, you're a monkey. He gets offended. I say, why are you getting offended? You told me you're a orangutan, bruv. <laughs> why? I don't know why you're getting offended now. They tell me you're a fish. He gets offended. I said, but I swear you don't sell that souls evolve from the sea. So you're all fish at the end of the day. Why are you offended? You know what I'm saying? And that's what he says about Allah Azza wa Jal. He, he said, Allah didn't create me. And what do you do? You want to become friends with this kafir. It doesn't make sense. Allah said, Ya Ayyu Allah said, Oh, you believe. La tattakhidu adui wa aduakum awliya. Allah said, Oh, you believe. Don't take my enemies and your enemies as friends. If you thought that the kafir is only an enemy of Allah, he's your enemy too. La ya'lunakum khadala. He wants to see you in distress, Allah said. He wants to see you destroyed. He'll look at any opportunity if to see you violated. He'll look at any opportunity that you want to become friends with him. And also the Muslim who's not practicing his deed, he's not as bad as a kafir, but he's also a fasiq. 
Nowadays, you, most, you know what a funny thing is? I'm out here telling you about don't become friends with kuffar. Most of you don't even have kafir friends. You have Muslim friends. It's Abdullah that sells you drugs. It's Abdullah that sells you drugs. Do you know what I'm saying? Before people what? He'd have what? And his, uh, the, the girls that are, you know, the, the funny loose ones, who will have names like Katie Stacey. Now, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raju'a. It says Fatima. That's a scary, bruv, stay away from these people. Stay away from them. These people, you're talking about, my friend snaked me. But of course he snaked you, he snaked Allah. He didn't pray. He didn't pray. إِلَّا الْمُنَافِقِينَ يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهِ They tried to snake Allah, they tried to play with Allah, they tried to deceive Allah So of course they're going to snake you in the end, does that make sense? They even tried to snake the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They would come to him, وَيَقُولُونَ طَاعَةً They would come to say, we're going to obey you, O Messenger of Allah. فَإِذَا بَرَزُوا مِنْ عِنْدَكَ بَيَّةَ طَائِفَةٌ مِنْهُمْ غَيْرَ الَّذِي تَقُولُ But at night they'll be plotting and doing opposite to what they said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So these kuffar, they betrayed Allah and they betrayed the Messenger. Of course they're going to betray you. So why do you get offended when he betrays you? The funniest thing is that you're like, Wallahi, the funniest thing is you say, no, he's not going to betray me. It's my guy, it's my dog. Actually, the guy's betraying Allah five times a day, he doesn't pray. The one who gave him everything that he has. For only one reason, so that he can worship him. There's a pact everyone has with Allah and he broke that pact to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. The Muslim or the Kafir. And you think he's not going to betray you? You think he's not going to betray you? That's nonsense. So the only way Allah is going to show you is by causing your friends to betray you then. So you want to wait to that moment? But you end up getting what? Set up by your friends? Or you end up getting violated by them? Because that will happen. Ibn Qayyim said one of the ways Allah punishes people is by leaving them to the ones that they chose other than Allah. You choose a girl over Allah, Allah's going to make that girl break your heart now. You chose the money over Allah, Allah's going to make that money a prison for you. Watch. It's up to you. You choose. <coughs> the Prophet ﷺ gave us an example of a good friend and a bad friend. The Prophet ﷺ said, Method al Jalis is Salih, the example of a good friend. Well, Jalis is Su, and an evil friend is what? The example of a person who sells perfume and a person who's a blacksmith. Well, my brothers, you might think blacksmith doesn't even make sense to me. I need examples that are relevant to me. Akhi, the Prophet's words, his speech was too much. Well, when you ponder over why the Prophet said that the good friend is like someone who sells perfume and a bad friend is like what? Someone who's a blacksmith for life. There's lessons in the if only ponder. There's so much in this. Let's break it down. The example of a blacksmith is what? Is the bad one. Right? And the example of a good friend is what? One who sells perfume. When you go to someone who is a perfume seller, what do you get? You can get what? One of three things from him. You get one of three things. Either you're going to buy something from him. When you buy something, do you get something good? What, what did you buy? Perfume. You're going to smell good. You might smell like me. It'll be very hard because the fragrances I have are very unique. One day, inshallah, if you, me and you become friends, you come to my house for food, I will show you my perfume collection. A lot of brothers, they talk about fragrances, but this is, there's games, there's, there's, there's levels to this. There's levels to this. There's fragrances. Yeah, you're, you, you know, <laughs> reason I'm telling you this, I don't feel shy saying this, you know why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, one of the things from this dunya that was made beloved to me was, was, was perfume. So this is the thing that you can, what, you can really talk about it. You don't have to feel shy. You can spend money on perfumes, it's good. But he said, my, the coolness of my eyes was in Salah. So basically there's one perfume I have, people always ask me. It was asking what? What's it called? And honestly, I can't tell you, you know why? Because the perfume bottle doesn't have a brand on there. It doesn't have the name. It just has the name of the fragrance, but it doesn't have the name of the brand. And do you know why that is? It's because it's such a big brand, they're like, we don't need to tell you the name. They just didn't realize there was going to be silly people like me that are going to never know their name. <laughs> I just remember when I go to the mall, there's a specific shop. This is that shop. Does that make sense? <laughs> so there's levels to this, brothers. Become friends with the guys who sell you perfume. They give you good, good fragrances. So the first thing is what? Is what? You buy something from him. The second thing is you might not buy something from him, but he'll give you something for free. Don't you go there, he sprayed a little sign on you. Hey, try this. You know, it's annoying when someone's trying to sell you something. They're like, you don't buy this, you don't buy this. But the guy who sells you perfume, he'll say to you what? Even though he's trying to sell it to you, but at least he gave you something. The guy tells you, listen, buy this from me, buy that from me. If you're not feeling it, you're going to walk away with nothing. You're not buying anything from the guy who sells you perfume, but you still walk away with a good smell. 
Or the third thing is what? What's the third thing that he'll give you? The perfume seller. The first thing is? The first thing is what? You'll buy something. The second thing is he'll give you a gift. The third thing is even if he doesn't give you a gift. The fact that you walked into the shop and walked out, you smell good. All right? You just, you smell good. You smell good. So then what is this analogy in light of the believers? The first thing is the believer, the way you go to the perfume seller, you buy something from him. You might go to the believer and you might say to him, I need some help. Um, you might be in financial, you need a loan. You might be in certain trouble. You might even say, I need some advice. And he'll give you what you ask for. He'll give you the money for the sake of Allah. He'll give you the advice that you need. He'll help you in that difficult time. Okay, what about when you go to him, you don't buy something from him, but he gives you a gift. Just by being around the believers, they're just dropping gems all day. He'll tell you a hadith, he'll tell you a verse, he'll tell you an ayah. He just gives you something. He just giving you gifts all day. He'll give you an ayah that is so valuable, this ayah is going to change your life and your relationship and the salah from now on. What's it? He gave you for free. You didn't even ask for it. Okay, third thing. You're around the believers. He, you didn't buy anything from him. He didn't ask him for no advice. He didn't give you no advice. You were just with them, listening to them, hanging out with them. You leave the gathering feeling like, yo... I feel good. I want to do good. Look at these guys. They're good. I want to do some good. So it leaves an effect on you. The same way being in the shop where they sell perfume, it leaves a nice smell on you. Being around the believers, these are a good effect on you. You feel like, you know what? Let me do something good today. Just feel like Iman is a little bit higher. What about the guy who sells, what, what, who's, the, who's the blacksmith? With him, there's, three, there's only two things. Not three, only two things. Being around him, <coughs> either... Because a blacksmith, what's a blacksmith? It's a guy who works with metal and he puts it in the fire. He puts it in the fire. Why? Because it gets hot. Then when it gets hot, he bends it. He breaks it. He make, they make swords. They make things. That's what a blacksmith does. He works with metal. He puts it in the fire, right? So you're going to get one or two from him. Either you're going to be with him and you're going to get burnt. Because they're playing with fire and there's flames that are flying around and all day, every day. You might touch the, you might touch the metal. Ah, it burnt. He's going to burn you. Or... If you leave, you're going to leave what? Stinking, smelling of that smoke or that dusty, dirty smoke. The soot of, of all the ashes is going to be all over you. They're going to come out unclean. That's like a bad friend. Either he's going to burn you with his sins in the hellfire. Or he's going to leave you with a bad taste in your mouth. Even if you're like, I'm hanging around with him, but I didn't do no evil. I didn't do no evil. You hang around with a blacksmith. You didn't do any of the stuff he did. You, don't, you didn't touch the metal. Or you, didn't, you didn't get burnt. But just by being there, you're going to stink. You're going to be dirty. You're going to have these ashes all over you. Same way when you're hanging around with people that are bad, you're going to leave what? You're going to leave smelling. Your iman's going to be affected. You're going to be thinking about sins. You're going to be thinking, you know what? See the man having such a good time. Look at the way they're making money. Let me just get into the game for a month or two and I get out. Look at him, he's got a girl. Me and I are trying to keep it hell out. You know what? I might as well shout a girl. You start having evil thoughts. It has an effect on you. So stay away from these people and look for the good people. Does that make sense? And bad, uh, bad friends will always snake you. You know people who encourage you to do evil, they'll always snake you. In the Battle of Badr, what happened was that the Kufar, they came to fight with the Muslims, right? They came to fight with the Muslims. So Shaitan came in the form of the human and he said, look, me, I'm the leader of this tribe and I brought my tribe as army to fight alongside you as well. So make the Kufar feel like, yeah, we've got more numbers. We're definitely going to murk the Muslims now. The Muslims now are definitely going to get murked. Look at how many of, the, of us there are. So Shaitan was encouraging him. Like sometimes one of your boys might come to you and say, listen, I move to this guy. Don't worry, we're all going to ride out together. We're, we're doing this together. I got to you, listen, get this girl. Shout her. Come to the club with me today. Don't worry, we're going to have a good time. Friends are always encouraging you to do evil, these bad ones. So Shaitan came in the form of a friend to these people and he brought his army. He said, I've got an army with me. Let's go. We're going to fight and we're going to defeat Muslims. The Muslims, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of them are going to kill them all today. And we, we, no one's going to lose. So Allah mentions in the Quran. Allah says, وَإِذْ زَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ أَعْمَالَهُمْ وَقَالَ لَا غَالِبَ لَكُمُ الْيَوْمَ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَإِنِّي جَارٌ لَكُمْ Shaytan, he came and he said, today I am your ally. He said, today I am your ally. No one's going to beat you. I'm going to protect you today. Me and you, we're going to ride out together. I've got your back. Does that make sense? Allah says, فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَتِ الْفِئَتَانِ نَكَصُ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْ The moment shaitan came to the battlefield, as a friend to these guys, say, I'm going to protect them. Because in the battle of Badr, Allah sent angels down to fight with the Muslims. Allah sent angels down to fight with the Muslims. When he saw the angels coming down, when he saw the angels coming down, what did he do? 
Nakasa ala aqibay. He turned back on his heels. He flipped back, he turned around. And he said, what did he say? He said, inni bari umminkum. He said, I'm free from you. I've got nothing to do with you. Inni ara ma la tarun. I can see things that you can't see. Inni akhafullah. I'm scared of Allah, bro. Wallahu shadidul iqab. And Allah is severe and punishing. So he flipped and he turned back and he went away. And that's what a lot of people are like. You're going to get, well, I, how many, well, I, how many people have I gone to visit? It's become a joke, well, I, man. How many brothers have I gone to visit in jail? How many brothers have I gone to visit in jail? I can't visit them now, I get invites, I don't even have the time to go. It's too many brothers I know in jail. How many brothers that we know that are buried? How many Salatul Janazah have we prayed? Do we bury them with our own hands? They don't listen. I told him, why would you hang around with these people, bro? Why? You didn't listen to me. They snitched on him. He's doing time on his behalf. Some of them are in it, it's not even his fault. Well, like one guy, Miskin, I went to visit one brother in jail. And there was one Miskin, Miskin brother. He looked Miskin, you know, thin, short guy. And his mum and dad were there. It was a practicing family, you could see mum was covered, dad was there, practicing guy. And they're there speaking to their son. So I said, the brother goes to me, because obviously he was in jail and he knows the brothers are on, he's like, he's on my wing. He said, you know what he's in for? He said, this is a miskin you. He said, uh, one day some guys decided to kidnap someone. He was with them. He was with them. He was hanging around. He thought, I might as well come. He, didn't, he wasn't even involved in anything. But they, bag, they bagged all of them and gave them all 14 years. They gave them all 14 years. As a matter of he wasn't involved. He was just with them. But they're becoming tough now. But look at that, just for being with someone. And now he's there, his mum's coming to visit him in prison. He's looking their head down. You can tell he's not built for this life. So don't do that, brothers. Don't hang around with such people. And when they go and get stuff, they're going to they're turn their back on you. They're going to turn their back on you. You know when you've got good friends? We spoke about the bad friends, right? Let's talk about the good friends. Having a righteous friend can make you go levels up in Jannah. Having a good friend makes you get honoured. You know Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he died and Umar was dead. Ali radiallahu anhu, he was there while his body was there. فَإِذَا عَلِيٌ فَتَرَحَّمَ عَلَى عُمَر He asked for Allah to have mercy on him over his dead body. He's there, he's dead. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, he says, Ya Allah have mercy on Umar. وقال, he said, مَا خَلَّفْتَ أَحَدًا أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ أَنْ أَلْقَ اللَّهِ بِمِثْلِ عَمَلِهِ مِنْكَ he goes on to then say, وَإِن كُنْتَ لَأَظُنُّ أَنْ يَجَعَلَكَ اللَّهُ مَعَ صَاحِبِي مَعَ صَاحِبِي صَاحِبَيْكَ He said that, I used to think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take you with your other two friends. Who are who? Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, Abu Bakr. And then who? And then Umar was next. And what made Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu know that Allah was going to take Umar after Abu Bakr and Abu Bakr after the Prophet? Because he said, Anni kuntu kathiran asma'u nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, because a lot I used to hear the Prophet say, ذهبت أنا وأبو بكر وعمر. The Prophet would always be saying, I went with Abu Bakr and Umar. ودخلت أنا وأبو بكر وعمر. And I entered with Abu Bakr and Umar. وخرجت أنا. Abu Bakr and Umar, and I left with Abu Bakr and Umar. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was always saying, I did this with Abu Bakr and Umar, I did that with Abu Bakr and Umar, I went here with Abu Bakr and Umar. So because they were so close, he said, I knew Allah was going to take you next, and he was going to make you with your friends. Pay attention, where is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam buried? In al Medina in the house of Aisha. Who is buried next to him? Abu Bakr. Who is buried next to him? Umar. Friends in life, friends in death. Look at the friendship of the Prophet with these two men and them becoming friends with the Prophet and choosing the Prophet over anyone else. Now every time we go and send salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who's right next that we send salam to? Abu Bakr. And then who's after? Umar. We're making dua for them right next to the Prophet every time we go to visit. And every moment there's someone coming and saying salam to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no, Abu Bakr and Umar. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala al-humma. It's constant. Except for when the Salah tank kicks in. Then no one's passing by the graves. No one's passing by when it's salah, but when the salah time is finishes, people will rush to send salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Abu Bakr and Umar. Why? Because of their friendship with the Prophet got them to be elevated to a very high status. 
This is why the Prophet وسلم, one time a man, he said to the Prophet sallallahu There's a man, he loves the people, he loves someone, he loves someone. وَلَمَّا يَلْحَقْ بِهِمْ But he didn't do enough good deeds to catch up with him. Like you love the Prophet, right? But have you done enough good deeds to be with the Prophet? You love Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. You love them. But have you done enough good to be with them? No. So what happens? Does that mean we're not going to be together on the Day of Judgment? Am I not going to be with the Prophet? Because the Prophet's going to be all the way up there in Al Jannah. And then Umar Uthman, all, they're going to be all up there. So am I not going to be, am I going to miss out on seeing the Prophet in this life and the next? The Prophet said, Al-Mar'u ma'a man ahab. A man is going to be with the people that he loves. So if you love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa what's going to happen? If you love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa you're going to be with him. If you love the Prophet's companions, you're going to be, you're going to be with them. You love the ulama, you're going to be with them. If you love the kuffar, where are you going to be? With them. If you love Messi, where are you going to be? With him. I'm going to keep it real. I know it's Allah to guide him. I, know, I hope, we hope, they, they, all the kuffar, these kuffar, we hope they go to paradise. But let's just say he dies. Your, your favorite drug rapper, you love him, you're going to be with him. The drug leaders, you're going to be with them. You're going to be with these men. Actually, you're going to be with Al Maru Ma'aman Hab. Ma'aman Ahab is going to be with the one that he loves. Pay attention. You know in Surah Al Kaf, Allah tells the story of the young men who went to the cave. And the reason why they ran to the cave was because there was a lot of fitna in their, in, the, in their city. So they ran to get away from the fitna. So their story is a very powerful story. But the thing that always is shocking is that Allah always Allah mentioned their dog. So Allah mentions they're in the cave and Allah is describing them in their situation. Allah said, وَكَلْبُهُمْ بَاسِطٌ ذِرَعِهِ بِالْوَصِيدِ And Allah said, and then their dog had its legs stretched out at the entrance. But it, you know when you look at the story, you think, why is Allah mentioning the dog? Okay, he had his legs stretched out at the entrance. Was he guarding them? Did the dog help them? Like, did the, what was the dog doing? And you know Allah doesn't mention anything for no reason. So Allah is mentioning the story and Allah said, and then their dog was at the front. As in, why? What, what's the story of the dog? Allah tells us about the stick of Musa. We know the stick. He would throw it, it would become a snake. He smacked it on the rock. Rivers came out. We know there's a story. There's a reason why Allah mentioned the dog. The scholar said the reason why Allah mentioned the dog is Allah hinting to you the status of having good friends. A dog which is najis. A dog which is impure. A dog if it licks you, you can't wash once. You have to wash seven times to clean yourself. That's how dirty it is. That's unclean, right? Because the dog was hanging around with these great, young, righteous men. Allah mentioned the dog in the Quran himself. Because he deserved to be mentioned because he was with righteous people. So when you're with righteous people, even if you're a dog, you're going to be mentioned. By who? Allah mentioned the dog. Look at the difference between Allah and the dog. But Allah just mentioned this low creature. Why? Because he was with good people. He was with good people. Does that make sense? Brothers, real friendship is about sacrifice. Real friendship is about sacrifice. And don't look at this selfishly, as in I need friends that will sacrifice for me. No, if you need to check, are you a good friend? Do you sacrifice for your friends? Look how Allah Azza wa Jal described the companions of the Prophet in Al-Madina. Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَأُ الدَّارِ وَالْإِيمَانِ مِنْ قَبْلِمْ يُحِبُّونَ مِنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ The companions who were in Al-Madina, the ones who were in Mecca, they came to them. They left everything. They left some of them wives. They left their kids. They left their houses. They left everything for the sake of Allah so they can come to a city where the people were not going to hurt them for worshipping Allah. So the ones in Medina have now got these guys from Mecca coming in. They've left everything behind. They're poor. They left everything behind. Some of them used to be rich, but now they're poor. Allah said, these ones in Medina, who've got these companions coming to them, Allah said, they, they love them. They love them. They love their brothers who are coming from Mecca to visit them. And they don't find in their heart any feeling of, ah, why is it that they're getting this, but I'm not getting that? Because people started looking out for the companions now from Mecca, so giving them house, taking care of them. They didn't feel anything in their heart about what they were given. And they would actually prefer them to get on top of themselves. Even if they were in need. They have food here, they need. Their own kids haven't eaten. They haven't eaten themselves. Let the companions and their families eat from Mecca. We will starve. 
We'll be hungry today. We'll pick them over ourselves. Allah says, Whoever overcomes the greed and the selfishness inside himself, he is the one who's successful. There's an example of two companions like this. One was called Sa'ad ibn al Rabi'a, and one was called Abdurrahman ibn Awf. Abdurrahman was from Mecca, and Sa'ad was from where? Al Medina. Sa'ad was the richest man in Al Medina. He was the richest man in Al Medina. And Abdurrahman ibn Awf, he comes to him. When he comes to him, Sa'ad says to him, I'm the richest man in Al Medina. My half, I'm going to cut it. My wealth, I'm going to cut it in half. Half of my wealth is for you, half is for me. As for my women, I have two wives. Look at which one you prefer and I'll divorce her and I'll keep the other one, you take my other wife. Did he not love his wife? He did, but he also loved his brother for the sake of Allah. He's got no wife. He said, at least I've got one, you can take the other one. Does that make sense? This is the level, this is what it means to be a good friend. Don't ask me to divorce my wife. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening, brothers. It's not happening, it's not happening. But if anyone's got a two, three, four, shit, you know, maybe look out for the young brothers, isn't it? <laughs> You're single. <laughs> look, this may be a level that your thinking is high. And it happens even till today. Wallahi, there are people that are like this today. But at the very least, man, a friend is one who's going to look out for you. Sometimes you're going through a hard day. And someone knows, wallahi, someone knows that you're suffering. He's not even looking at you. He's just busy on his phone. That doesn't make sense. Sometimes we hang around, you hang around with someone. He knows you're going through difficulty in life. We have a WhatsApp group. A lot of you guys are in it, right? Notice that there are brothers that are randomly sending messages every few days. Akhir, there's a brother who's in need of some money. He needs help. Can we raise some money? 600 pounds. Boom, and you send it over to him. Another brother message. Akhir, I know someone. His, you know, his family's in hospital. Da, 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 in this country, they're stranded. They need about 200 pounds. Can we send it to him? Put your hand if you're in that group. You see, you see those messages, right? You see those messages. Look at the, the, look at the friend who sends that message. Is he not a good friend? He's concerned for his boy. He's concerned for his boy. So he sends that message. And then look at the brothers who what? Who send it. And they don't even know who the guy is. Some of you guys don't know the guy sending the message. And some of you guys don't know the one who he's asking the money for. But you give. Or you go and call your friends. Because you're trying to help the believers. It's a believer in trouble. I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Do you understand? That's what it's like when it comes to the believers. But you're, you want to hang around with people that, what? They don't care. You're going for a bad day. It doesn't care. It doesn't care. He didn't even look at you twice. He doesn't even... He doesn't even look at you twice. Is this working? No, it's not. Mic check, one, two, it's fine now. Sorry, I'm a bit aggressive <laughs> with my movements. <laughs> and now, Brothers, inshallah ta'ala, to conclude, one thing that's very important is that we should always bring these discussions that we're having in light of the Day of Judgment. What is going to be the affair of what? Of the people who had good friends on the Day of Judgment. And what is going to be the affair of the people who had bad friends on the Day of Judgment? This is, wallahi, you really have to observe life through the context of the Day of Judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said on the day of judgment Al-akhillau yawma idhin ba'atuhum li ba'atin adu Allah said on the day of judgment best friends are going to be enemies to one another Al-akhillau yawma idhin ba'atuhum li ba'atin adu They're going to become enemies on that day Best friends illa al-muttaqeen but the only friends who are not going to become enemies are the ones who used to fear Allah. The righteous, they will be friends even on the day of judgment. On a day when people are being snaked by their mums. A man's mum is running away from him. He's running from his mum, from his dad. He runs from his own wife. He runs from his own child. Because maybe they were not upon taqwa. But when it comes to a righteous friend, he's going to be there for you on the day of judgment. He won't betray you. He will not betray you on that day. 
But the evil friend, Allah said, وَقَالَ إِنَّهُمْ وَقَالَ إِنَّمَا اتَّخَذْتُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْ عفوا, the verse in Furqan, وَيَوْمَ يَعُضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْ The person who was a wrongdoer on the day of judgment, he didn't have righteous friends. He chose to have friends with those who are going to become enemies now. يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي He will say, woe to me. He will say, woe to me. أَتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا I wish that I had taken the Prophet's way. I wish I followed the Sunnah. I wish I listened to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. يَا وَيْلَتَا Woe to me. لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أَتَّخِذْ فُلَانٍ خَلِيلًا I wish I didn't take him as a friend. This person, I wish I never took him as a friend. Why? لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ He misguided me. And he diverted me and misguided me away from remembrance. بَعْدِ إِذْ جَاءَنِي The reminder came to me. The Qur'an came to me. The Hadith came to me. The warning came to me. But he told me, no, we're going to go this way. We're going to go do this tonight. We're going to hang around here. لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي He misguided me عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بعد إذ جاني came to me but my friend took me away وكان الشيطان للإنسان خذولا and shaitan is always going to desert you and the shaitan can be a human and the shaitan can be a jinn so some of you have human friends that are devils and in the day of judgment what? Allah said يوم, يوم يعود الظالم he's going to be biting his hands as he says this he's going to bite his hands and say Allah I wish I never took him as a friend it's too late Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he spoke to the kuffar in time, he said, he said, إنما اتخذتم من دون الله أوتا مودة بينكم في الحياة الدنيا. This shirk that you're doing is because of your love for each other. This disobedience to Allah is because of your love for each other. ثم يوم القيامة يكفر بعضكم ببعض. But on the day of judgment, you're going to start disbelieving in each other. ويلعن بعضكم بعضا. You're going to curse each other. ومأواكم النار. But you're going to go to hell. It's too late. That friendship is going to break up on that day. Allah said, حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَنَا قَالَ يَا لَيْتَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكَ بُعْدَ الْمَشْرِقَيْنِ The people on the day of judgment who had bad friends, they're going to say, what? If only there was a distance between me and you, the distance between the east and the west. On the day of judgment, now he wants to hang around with him. His mom said, why are you hang around with this guy? He can't get away from him. He can't leave this guy. He's on to him. He's on to him. But on the day of judgment, he's going to say, I wish me and you were far like the east and the west is far. On the day, they're going to start turning on each other. Allah said, يَوْمَ يُقَلَّبُ وُجُوهُمْ فِي النَّارِ On the day, their faces are going to be rolled in the fire. Allah said, their faces are going to be turned. They turn, we're going to turn their faces in the fire. يَقُولُونَ يَا لَيْتَنَا They're going to say destruction to us. أَطَعْنَ اللَّهُ وَأَطَعْنَ الرَّسُولَ if only we obeyed Allah, if only we obeyed the Prophet. وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّا أَطَعْنَا سَادَتَنَا وَكُبَرَاءَنَا وَأَضَلُّنَا السَّبِيلَ But instead we followed our leaders, we followed the big man on the block, we followed the celebrities, we followed these people, and they misguided us from the path. رَبَّنَا آتِهِمْ عَذَابًا دِعْفًا مِنَ الْعَذَابِ Then they're going to say, Allah, give him double the punishment. رَبَّنَا آتِهِمْ دِعْفَيْنِ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ بارك الله فيه. Allah, you're going to say, our Lord, give us, give them double the punishment. Give them double the punishment. وَلْعَنْهُمْ لَعْنًا كَبِيرًا And give them a mighty curse. So friends are going to start cursing each other. They're going to say, Allah, punish him. Punish him, Ya Rab. Curse him, Ya Rab. But in this life, he's saying, I'm looking out for you. In this life, he says, what? I'm looking out for you. It's enough to say that what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا يَسْأَلُ حَمِيمٌ حَمِيمًا One friend is not going to ask about another friend on that day. يُبَصَّرُونَهُمْ but they're going to be looking at each other. They're right in front of each other. But they're not going to care. يَوَدُّ الْمُجْرِمُ لَوْ يَفْتَدِي مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِ إِذِنْ بِبَنِي If he could, your friend on that day, he would ransom and sell his own child so he could be saved from the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَصَاحِبَتِي وَأَخِيهِ He would sell his wife. Say, Allah, take my wife. Take my son. Take my brother. To the point where Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Woman fi al-ardi jamian, from my unji." Rather, take everyone on earth and save me. Take my friends, burn them all in the hellfire. Allah save me. But I told you there was one group, only one group, that will not betray you. And what is it? The people of taqwa, the people of piety. 
There's a hadith called the hadith of Jahannam Yun. The people are going to go inside of hell. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us when the people are placed in hell and the believers are going to paradise, the believers are going to stop. The believers. And they're going to start begging Allah to help the Muslims that are burning in the hellfire. Look at this, they could just bun you and say, you know, I'm going to paradise. I made it, every man for himself. I've got my huri waiting for me in Jannah. I've got my huri waiting for me in Jannah. But no, 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 even though Jannah is waiting for them, they start begging Allah, Ya Allah, Allah. There were people that prayed with us and they are in hell. Ya Allah, there are people that fasted with us and they are in hell. Ya Allah, they were Muslims, they were with us in this life, they're in hell. Ya Allah, save them. So Allah Azza wa Jalla will tell them, go and find anyone who has a gold coin amount of Iman and bring them out of the hellfire. So they will go to the hellfire. And they will notice the people have the gold coin worth of Iman. It will be on their forehead. Because they prayed. They're in hell even though they prayed. And Allah will not allow that to be burnt. So they'll see the gold coin worth of Iman on their forehead and they'll take them out of the hellfire. But there are some that are still burning so they'll... They will, Allah Azza wa Jalla will say, now go and take out those who have half of that. And they will take them out, but there are still Muslims that are burning. So then Allah will say, go and take out those who have an ant, an ant's weight of iman, tiny ant, a tiny ant's worth of iman. And then it doesn't get lower than that. <laughs> the believers, they help to that level, they can't help more. They can't help more. But is that good that they helped? Now there are people who Iman can't even be seen. It's there but it can't even be seen. Allah says, now I will go and I will take them out of hellfire myself. So Allah will take these people out of hell and because they've been burnt, Allah will put them in a river where then the river will cause them to get healed and Allah will send them into paradise and they will be given very specific necklaces to wear in Jannah and they will be called Utaqa ur Rahman, the ones who Allah freed Himself. These were the lowest of low. They were people that were so bad, the Iman could the Iman couldn't even be seen. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala freed them and they are gonna be in Jannah honored. Allah freed us. He could be a drug dealer, he could be what? He could be the murderer, he could have been a fornicator, she could have been a prostitute. But Allah freed them himself. And because Allah freed them, the rest got freed by prophets. Or what they come out what with Allah, with Allah's permission by the way the prophets did it and or, or or what or believers the huffar and the martyrs and whatnot but these ones Allah freed them Allah reserves His intercession for the worst and then they're gonna get necklaces and be called utaqa ur rahman why have I told you this hadith for two reasons number one the believers are gonna come in handy for you on the day of judgment. And when the believers themselves cannot come handy for you, then there is no one for you except Allah. So yes, befriend the believers, but don't forget to have a relationship with Allah. Because at the end of the day, even the believers, though they are good and they are better than the ones who are evil, they're still human and humans will make mistakes and humans will let you down. He could be the most practicing brother, but one day he may let you down, it's true. But the only one who will never let you down is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I have a relationship with Allah. Have a relationship with the masjid. Pray your salah in the masjid, my brothers. Read Quran, the speech of Allah. Give Allah some time in the night prayer. Fast Mondays and Thursdays. Seek knowledge, learn, learn. Imagine if you're in hell, and we ask Allah to protect us, so we don't even see it, I mean. But if you're in there, Allah is going to know you and save you. But you didn't even know Allah, how sad is that? Learn aqeedah, learn tawheed, learn fiqh, knowledge, knowledge, brothers, is very important. With that says, subhanakallah, wa bihamdik, ashadu la ilaha illa anta, astaghfirullah, wa atubu ilayk. If you'd like to get more information about when the next event is going to be, the location, time, place, date, click the link below and join the Telegram group that will take you to a group where we have all the information about all of our live events. Wanted to give those of you who are not able to make it an opportunity to participate in the khair. And that is that, inshallah, if you would like to contribute towards the expenses of these events, 
We don't charge anyone to attend, but we do have a lot of expenses, food, whatnot, the giveaways that attract the people to come in and whatever have you. As you can see, it brings in the youth, the youngsters, the ones who, you know, we really need to reach out to them and get them in the masjid. Who knows, someone may come to the masjid, completely change their life. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the primary reason for that. But then Allah Azza wa might have made you a means for that person or those people to change. So donate as generously as you can at the link below. And inshallah ta'ala, please come and attend. So hopefully we see you there inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum, peace.